and welcome to another episode of Smile Diaries. I am Dr. Gita Harb. I have here the amazing Caroline Baudino. Oh. She came here all the way from Los Angeles. I am so happy to be here. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you for I'm honored coming, to be here. seriously, and driving down. You are so cute. I literally fell in love with you on Instagram within like a quick point. That means two, so two, much. five seconds. Oh, I love you. <laughs> that means so much. Yeah. Especially you, another woman saying that. I always say yes. thank you for saying that out loud because I think a lot of women thank forget you, that yes. it's okay to support each other. Yeah. And it's okay to say it out loud. They're 100%. not taking away from you by supporting somebody else. A hundred percent. I think that's so important because a lot of women feel that, you know, if someone else is doing well and looking good and all of that, that takes away from them. And it doesn't. We really need a good, strong women community. I'm all about hyping women up yep. and, you know, Me hey, too. you're working hard. Good for you. You're doing great. That's awesome. I'm happy for you. So, but you are so cute. Literally oh, so cute. You. Um, and I think I told you the story. I was in Cabo, right? <laughs> That's the best story. And this is actually a good one because it's about women supporting women yes. when you're not in the room. Yes. Which is important. Let's talk about that. Yes. So, um, I was folks on vacation about a couple weeks ago in Cabo, Mexico. Favorite place. Favorite place. And we were in the pool and we had, you know, we had met some friends in comment and one of your girlfriends I was literally sitting in the pool drinking a margarita <laughs> and um and she's like well what do you do and I was like I'm a cosmetic dentist I have my own podcast and we're talking with her husband as well yep. about maybe be bringing him on the podcast and she goes oh my god you gotta have my girlfriend Caroline on <laughs> I love Kristen we love you yes and she and I go Caroline who and she's like shop with Caroline and I go I already follow her oh my god that is amazing. <laughs> and I love her and I'm like you know what I'm gonna reach out when I get back amazing um, Home. I'm honored. And I did. And you responded right away. And I'm so happy that you're here. I'm so, so happy to be here. Thank you, Gita. You are so raw and amazing. So um, I wanted to kind of start the podcast by, you know, giving give me a little bit of a background yeah. about yourself. Um, you know, I know you're married, you have kids and Tell us a little bit about about that. So really, you know, I was born and raised here in the United States, mm -hmm. but my parents are Latino. My parents are Cuban, so I'm first oh, generation. Okay. So hablo español. Yeah, so I, I love speak. that. Thank you. Um, so <laughs> you I got know, the Cuban fire in I'm you. I'm a little bit of the Cuban Latin That's blood. So <laughs> I love that. I love passion and fire. That is where yes. it comes from. Yes. And you know, I was you know born and raised here. Grew up. You know, my family, my parents were you know in television and working, mm -hmm. and my mom was a stay at home mom and. You know, I went to college, graduated, you know, always wanted to be an actress, the typical, yeah. you know, same dream as so many of us yeah. that, you know, watch TV, watch movies. That's all I ever wanted to do. You know, when you realize the reality of it is way harder than you think, mm -hmm. that everything takes so much more work than you think. It does. It does. And then I started feeling the pressure from my parents to get married. And as you know, in this Latin culture, it is right. very much, you do get married, you marry well, they prim and pro, you know, they, yes. they prep you for this. Mm -hmm. you, this is like that you go to college to get oh, married yeah. well, you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. I'm, love, I'm loving so I know Thank how you. that is. You we're know. we're Middle Eastern and say, like, yeah, to get married, yeah, have kids, and never got... teach you to be the CEO. They want you to marry no. the CEO. Yeah, that's yeah. the truth. Yes. And so for me, it was like very much living under that rule of thumb mm -hmm. and feeling that kind of pressure. Right. And you know, I almost did. I almost got married to what everyone thought was you know the your wildest dreams, gazillionaire from Wall Street. Mm -hmm. And I really wasn't happy. That's the truth. I really wasn't happy. And, you know, I watched a lot of unhappiness at home. My parents, you know, were married. They're still married. But my dad was always cheating, you know. Aww. My mom was always, you know, yeah. angry and pissed. Right. And it was always, like, drama. And I just remember thinking, like, I don't want that. I just always remember thinking, I don't want that kind of right. household. So for me, it was very much, I need to go make something for myself. I need to go. I need to be on my own. I want to be independent. I want to make my own money. I don't want to depend on a man. It was like this very, right. I don't want to yeah. do this. So, you know, went off to LA, I started, you know, hosting a TV show and very luckily was working, making money. And, you know, needless to say, in your 30s, you meet Knight in Shining Armor. All of a sudden, <laughs> out of nowhere, I meet the nicest guy I've ever Aww. met on the planet. And my husband now, genuinely, it was one of those things where he was just so different from everybody else. Yeah. There was no game playing. Listen, he wasn't rich. He wasn't, you know, all the things that my parents right. had insisted on. But he was a really, really good person, and I knew he was really smart. And I was mm -hmm. like, you know, we could we can do big things together. I had a feeling. Yeah. So it was really figuring that out, settling down, having kids, and all of a sudden, I'm now at home. I'm not working. I've got two kids back to back. I had kids at 30 and 40. Mm -hmm. um, I had so two you boys. had stopped working when you when after you had I your gave kids. birth my my okay. second one. <clears throat> I stayed home. I got it. And at this point, I am in my 40s. Mm -hmm. I'm home. 
I'm now, you know, two babies back to back, mm-hmm. you know, two years apart, you know exactly wow. what that means. Yes, yes. And, you know, no help because of course I didn't marry the person my parents told right. me I needed to marry. So now, you know, there's no nanny, there's no night nurse, there's no one coming yes. to save me or help me. And I was <laughs> You're like, You're on your own, I was Caroline. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that was really this background of coming from a place of always being told you're going to be taken care of and mm-hmm. coming from this point of being taught to be very independently dependent yes on a man right and coming to this point where i'm facing now where literally i'm home i'm not happy i'm taking care of two small kids i'm in my 40s i think menopause is starting to creep mm-hmm. in perimenopause and, and how old were i'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you but how old were your kids at that point and like how many years after you had your kids did you start feeling that way so i it really was i had them back to i had them at 38 and 40 and mm-hmm. i would say when they those first two when they were like four and six mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it was that real feeling of yeah. oh god this is like yeah. the monotony starts to really set in yeah you know the thrill of like everyone right. treating you like gold everyone wanting to help all of a sudden it's like you're on your own you've got to lose all the weight the hormones the stress the no sleep you know nobody talks about it nobody warns you about that Mm -mm. time so I realized I like caught myself into this very difficult situation where I really want to be independent I want to have my own money I don't want to depend on anybody but yet I'm sitting home I'm taking care of the kids there is nobody else coming no one else can take care of them so you're stuck yeah. And it was that feeling stuck. Yeah. And genuinely, even with the greatest husband in the world, I felt really stuck. And that's really where this all began. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. So, um, I mean, you know, it, that's like, I feel like that's a story with a lot of women, right? Yes. Um, because that's what, I mean, even for me, you know, I've always worked. I've never stopped working. I was nine months pregnant. I was doing root canals and oh and all of that. And then um, pretty much the same thing. But, you know, I had my daughter and I had a C-section. And two weeks later, my husband took me to dinner. And at dinner, I started bawling. Like the waitress came with the plate. She's like, yeah. your food is here. And I was I was like, Hysterical not, not crying. hysterically crying. And she's like, um, she looked at my husband because she thinks like it's his fault. And he said something <laughs> to me. And, and she looked at him like in a mean way. And I was like, no, no, it's not him. No, he's nice, I, I just, swear. I just had a baby two weeks ago. And, and I want to go back to work. <laughs> and my husband's like, but you can. The doctors said you have to wait. I'm like, but I need to work. I yeah, just, it's hard. I just, it's hard. So tell me a little bit about what what happened after that? Okay. I know there was a moment when we were talking on the phone. You said there was a moment in your life when something happened and just sort of woke you up and you the huge you realized, awakening yes genuinely Gita honestly it was going from I would think I was an autopilot I think I was in zombie zone yeah you know where you're just like that mom that's yeah. just kind of like you're putting one foot in front of you you're just trying to get through each and every day I just remember planning like okay if I walk here they'll nap here and if I get in the car they'll nap so I can, I mean this is yeah. li- literally all I'm thinking about and at this point you know you're kind of going back and forth from school volunteering all day every day and I kind of realized I was like I love them they're the greatest things that ever happened to me, mm-hmm. but I need something else. I was like, I need to focus my energy. I need to have an adult conversation. I need to use my brain. I want to make money. I hate asking permission for like, if I can buy something, I have never done that. Why am I doing that now? So right. literally I can, I, I see myself getting into this like kind of a rut, right? Where you're, right. you're starting to feel stuck, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That's stuck oh, feeling, that's, yeah, which totally. is horrible. It's yeah. like the anxiety yeah. feeling of like, oh my God, like there's really no way out now. Like now I have a kid at home, now I'm married, now I have to ask permission, what happened? And it was this moment where the phone call rings. I mean, the phone call rings, Mm -hmm. the phone rings. And my mom literally is hysterically crying, screaming at the top of her lungs. She's like, your father's been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. He has no idea where this, we've lost all this money. I don't know where anything is. I don't know what to do. My whole world's falling apart. You have to take care of it. You have to take care of it. You have to take care of it. And I was just like, I just remember like, I think the phone, like my hands were trembling. Mm -hmm. I was like the horrible anxiety attack. I was like the two most powerful, smartest people I ever knew, didn't know how to do anything. Wow. I was literally like, oh my God. I was like, mom, what do you mean you don't know how to do anything? I was like, you've been managing everything for 50 years. What do you mean you don't know? Oh so it was, I just remember Gita. Mm-hmm. I literally hang up the phone with her. My hands are shaking. I walk past the mirror. I look and I was like, who the hell is that? I did not recognize myself. I was like, who is this overweight, sweating, stressed out, anxiety, eye twitching, hasn't slept, looks miserable who the hell is that I was like because that's not Caroline I'm like I remember Caroline being so fun she -hmm. always looked fabulous loves fashion loves getting dressed always has her makeup on loves her jewels loves having fun is positive happy ready for any adventure loves to work hard always has a smile on her face I was like where the hell is Caroline 
And I literally looked in the mirror and I was like, I lost her. I was like, she's in there somewhere, but I don't know where she is. I was oh, like, wow. I'm losing her. I was like, I'm becoming my mom. I was like, I'm becoming so dependent. I don't know where anything is. I don't know where, if, if something happened right now to John, I'm like, I actually don't know where anything yeah. is. And so I was, I was like facing myself, literally right. facing that reflection. And I was like, oh God, if that's a superhero that's coming to save me, if that's, <laughs> if that's the knight in shining armor right. that's coming to save you, if that's the reflection, I was like, then I need to get you know what together. I was like, oh this is where I was God. like, okay. I was like, I've got to bring her back. You I was can like, I'm bringing Carol. Oh, I can. Okay, yeah, good. so you can cuss on I was show. like, you got to bring her. I was like, we've got to bring Caroline <laughs> right. back. I was right. like, I'm bringing her back. If it's the last thing I do from this moment on, I'm bringing her back. That best version of me, the happy, mm-hmm. smiling mm-hmm. one. I was like, I'm yeah. tapping back in. Yeah. And that's and where it's, it it's so funny because we don't, as women, we get into that rut of like getting out, taking care of the kids. And yeah. I was like that too, even though I always, you know, I always worked and everything. But I, I too, like I would put my work hats aside because I'm like, no, I got to make, you know, lunch for my hubby and I got to take care the of guilt. the kids and I got to drop off and then I got to go to work. And then you get in that rut where it's little by little takes like pieces away from you. It's yes. not, it's not like an overnight thing. It's not and an overnight thing. It's not thing. an overnight thing. And you just, you don't realize it until it's bad. You it know? does. And that's, and women don't realize it. You know what scarier is? Yeah. It's usually 18 years. It's usually oh, yeah. when the kids leave for college. Yes. That's when women all of a sudden take a look in the mirror and they're like, oh, who the yeah. hell is that? And you're like, how do I, wait, yeah. it's been 18 years. Right. How the hell do you get back in? Yeah. And a lot of my friends who are the smartest people I know, they're like, wait, I don't know. I don't know the technology now. Like, I don't know how to do that. They're scared yeah. to even put themselves right. out there because it's been 18 yeah, years. Yeah, and a lot has changed in 18 years. I mean, you know, in five years, a lot of things changed. Yeah. So I can't imagine. So tell me a little bit about, okay, so you got up, you looked in the mirror and, and you didn't recognize yourself. Yes. What was the first thing that you did? Truthfully, the first thing I did was I talked to my husband. And I'll be honest with you because I believe in happy marriages. Mm-hmm. I think we've normalized misery. Mm-hmm. You know, we've oh, normalized yeah. hating everybody. We've normalized hating our husbands. And it's all funny. We all say it. We all, you know what I mean? Right. I get it. It's a joke. Yeah. But the truth is, there really is a world where you can have healthy relationships and you can have a help, you know, you can have a happy home, you can have a healthy marriage. My husband and I are very much about really open communication because at the end of the day, if I don't tell him what's going on, like he can't read my mind. He doesn't know what I'm going through. Right. He doesn't really understand. That's the truth. Yeah. And, you know, we joke around like when men are like, oh, well, you're just on your period and we go crazy, but they're not wrong. There is something about that time and our hormones that is really scary, especially when you're entering perimenopause in that right. way. You do have to have an open communication and say, you know what? I love you. I love my life. I love my kids, but I'm not happy. And it's and, like, it's and- not rock bottom. I'm not you know, I'm not like, I don't need to go to a doctor, but like, I'm not happy. And there's, right. there's no, now there's no gray area where women can be unhappy. Now, if you have a car and a house, you are not allowed to say you're unhappy because Correct. you have it all. So you can't be working and look fabulous and have a hard day. You can't be, you could have it all. It doesn't mean you're, again, doesn't, you're, mean, you're doesn't mean you're happy. Yeah. So it was very much about being open with him and, and not looking at it with shame, being like, listen, I know I'm a good mom. I know I'm a good wife but I want more, like I'm smart, I'm capable. Like, why am I not making my own money? Why am I not doing things that interest me? Like yeah. what happens when the kids leave? What am right. I gonna do? Right. Sit around and shop for 50, 20, 30 years? No, you wonder why women are so unhappy and bored because they're bored mm-hmm. and there's yeah. no real purpose. Yeah. So for me, it really started there, having that open communication with John being like, I just feel like I need some help. I need some time in the morning. I need to like, I need to have time for me to just feel like me again. I just want to feel good again. Yeah. And it really just started there with getting up and what I call, which we will talk about is the happy tools and just mm-hmm. figuring out what are those tools that you can use each and every day that tap back into that positive energy. You yeah. know, whether- and, and, and I have to say though, I have to stop you for a second and say, I'm, I'm very proud of you for opening up to your husband because not yeah. a lot of women do. Well, don't you feel like also because I think women sometimes we, it's like we want, it's pressure. It's, our, it's also our egos because yeah. a lot of the time it's too, you know, men, yeah. we want, we say we're the only ones that know how to do it. Like your husband knows how to do the dishes. Well, he yeah. knows how to take care if of the kids. If you can bring a tooth from the brain down into yes. the mouth and move like this to the, that. You know what you're doing. You can make a peanut butter sandwich. Yes. Like, and I'm like, I don't do, understand. Why do we pretend like they don't know how to do stuff? Of course because they know how to do things. Because we baby them. We baby them. We make we enable them. We enable. We, we want to seem like yeah. we do it all. You know, for yeah. me, it's like when I wasn't doing anything else, I wanted to seem like I was doing it all right. because I didn't have a job. So, so continue. Go so ahead. I'm more yes. like, I always say ladies, you know, you don't need to be a suit. Like, again, 
you don't need to do it all. Like right. he knows how to do things. He can take care of the kids. Yeah. You can have a weekend yeah. away. You can go out with your girlfriend. Stop being the martyr. Stop yes. pretending like you're the only one that knows how to do it. At the end of the day, that's your ego. Mm -hmm. And that's just something for you to say that you're doing. Yeah. It's he's gonna play stupid as long as he possibly can. Well, and the other thing <laughs> is why wouldn't you? The less you do, the, the more, more you do to. the more you do, the less they do. Right. Right. And right. so you have to do less in order for them to do more. Hundred percent. I learned that in the last year. That was like after sixteen years of marriage, I realized no, I'm just going to let that go and see if... Let it go. <laughs> and, and the truth is now my husband helps so much. And, yeah. and now it's also, you know, it's weird to have the men, you know, doing something at home. Right. And I'm like, you know, if you stop worrying about what society is saying... Exactly. And actually do what makes you happy, mm -hmm. like we, it works for us. Yeah. So for me to be doing the dishes just to say I'm doing yeah. the dishes, yeah. but we're not happy, what is the point? Exactly. So it's always exactly. about being honest with yourselves, being honest as, as a couple and really discussing what works for you. And it doesn't have to be what everybody else is doing. Yeah. It's like, what actually makes you happy? What role really make you happy yeah, and you can't compare you, you really cannot compare. compare your life to anyone else I mean that's another thing that I learned is you know and a lot of times I I would be a little bit resentful too because I'd say you know well look at all these other women and they yeah. just shop and drink champagne all day and I'm working five days a week and I'm doing this and I come home and I cook and I take care of the kids and I look good and I work out right and so you become resentful at some point but then you have to stop and realize you know what you just cannot say that and you cannot compare yourself to other people because you just have to if something's making you unhappy you have to go in and change it and you just Absolutely. regardless of what everybody else is doing it, you you hold the power at the end of the day you do you hold the power to make any change to evolve to mm -hmm. you know try something new at the end mm -hmm. it's just like it is just what you're willing the effort you're willing to make yeah. and yeah. It, you know and you realize a lot of us aren't willing to make the effort right and then when you do and you see those results you're like oh i get it yeah. it is worth it yes but you don't yeah. see it until you're doing it yeah so it's a, i love being that constant reminder of i know if you're sitting at home thinking that there's no options there is an option. There's a lot of options. There is a lot of options. True. Um, and so, well, so, so you sat down and talked with your husband and yeah. tell me a little bit, I want to talk now about all the tools that you started doing yeah. from A to Z to get Caroline back, you know, to get the fun, happy. dressed up, happy, all of that. And, and all, you know, Gita, you know what the truth is? Yeah. It's, a, it's like figuring out what those tools are for you, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, right? Because sometimes the things, our definition of success can be different. Our definition of what makes us happy mm -hmm. is different. Mm -hmm. You know, some people love getting dressed and looking fabulous. Some people just right. love having their hair done. They don't care about the makeup. So again, it's always about really zeroing in on trying to remember what are those things that before life took you down, right? Before responsibility, husband, mm -hmm. kids, what are those things that you used to look, you know, how did you look when you were really happy? What were you dressed How like? How did you feel? How did what you did feel? You what were you doing? Who did you hang around? You know, were there things like, did you forget like, oh my God, I love photography. Maybe take a photography class. I don't know. You loved, you know, helping organize, start organizing some friends, you know, right. places. For me, it was always, I love movement. I always know that exercise is somebody, something that always helps my anxiety. Yeah. So for me, it was like with perimenopause and mm -hmm. my parents getting sick and me going through this transition being like, God, I don't recognize myself. I was like, I need to tap back into what I know works. So I know exercise works for me. I know mm -hmm. that helps my anxiety in yeah. some way. So if I do a little bit every day, that's gonna help my anxiety. Then it was like, okay, gratitude. I keep thinking constantly about all the things that I don't have. How about if I just say the things like, hey, I had a coffee alone today. It was amazing. Like yeah. I had a minute, I talked to my mom today. She was happy. That's great. Yeah. Like just try to remember what that little bit of gratitude is. Right. That face in the sun. I always notice that when I'm in nature, mm -hmm. I would notice that when I'm mm -hmm. sitting outside and I would just lay in the sun, it would calm my nerves. Yep. It would help the my sun stress. Therapy. Sun therapy. It's and then huge. you read about it. It's huge. It's such so a real big. thing. Yeah. So I remember being like, oh, I remember like when I put my face in the sun, it feels good. Like yeah. I feel calm. My feet in the grass. Yeah. So it's just like those little things that I was yeah. like, oh, little by little. Then I was like, I love getting dressed. I have never liked looking like shit. That is not <laughs> something that to me. You and I together. <laughs> together. Like I will never understand the choice that you have every day that, you know, you walk, you walk past that mirror, you yeah. look like shit. That plays horrible head games oh, on you. Yeah. That is negative self-talk. You are immediately being like, oh, you look like shit. Oh God, oh God, I hope no one sees me. Oh, why didn't I lose weight? Yeah. Why didn't I buy it? Why didn't I check? And you don't feel self-worth when you look like shit. You become you don't insecure. Feel, yeah. You're unmotivated. You're in a bad mood and you're probably not going to be as nice. Okay, as simple as that. Very and then simple. when you take that time for yourself, right? At the end of the day, you getting up and getting dressed is the signal to your brain that you give a shit about yourself. Right. You're making the effort now. Self-respect. Yeah. You're not dead. Get up. Yeah. And for me, your life is a special occasion. You and being the, alive. And the world treats you differently. They do. You know, it's like when you when you go on, your hair is not done, your makeup's not done, and you're in sweats, and and you know, people 
treat you differently. A hundred percent. You know, I see that and I never do that. But if, if I ever go out like that, you know, I, and then when I go out and I'm dressed up and looking good and the I take difference. care of myself, there's a huge difference. Huge. And that is so big for your own ego, for your own self-esteem and your own confidence. I think dressing, even like I was telling you earlier, like I would dress up to go to Trader Joe's. And my husband's like, it's not a fashion show. It is for me. I it mean, that's, right. th- it's that's medicine what makes, to me. It's medicine for me. It makes me feel good to put makeup on and eyeliner and a mascara and look good and look sexy that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go to trader joe's i'm gonna look sexy at trader joe's and you know what what is the problem with that well my point (laughs) is the truth is if you are getting dressed for a date yeah then you care exactly if you're getting dressed to go to an interview like are you going to a job interview in your sweatpants with no makeup on and your hair in a bun exactly i doubt it like you are gonna get dressed for something that's important to you right yeah and something that like you want to meet that hot guy you're not going in your pajamas with your dirty hair you're gonna get your brows done you're gonna shave you're gonna get a so the point is if you are making an effort in any way for any of those things, it means you do yeah. care. Yeah. And it does make you feel better. And every day so matters. Every and every day minute matters. of your life matters. Every you know, day is a gift. It doesn't have to be a wedding or a You're what, the special occasion. Yeah. You are the special occasion. 100%. Dress that way. So for me, it was always that mind game that I'm always like, I want to set myself up for success every day. What sets me up for success? I lay my clothes out because I know I like to look good. I set my workout the day before because I know that workout's going to make me feel good. I will make the time for that gratitude because I know it makes me feel good. All those little things, that positive self-talk. I will look in the mirror and I will literally remind myself daily, you're beautiful, you're smart, you're capable, you're strong, and you can do hard things. Let's go. Every day. Just remind yourself. And it is those things that the words you speak to yourself, what mm-hmm. you see, that reflection mm-hmm. you see, all of those things affect you. Everything. It's Everything really affects the you. whole physical is so related to the mental. You know, I know it some really people is. are like, well, you know, you don't it have to look matter. good. It should, yeah, it shouldn't matter. But no, like when I, you know, when you work out or I work out, you feel that energy afterwards. You feel powerful. And then, you know, you take a shower and you look good and, you know, like when... But why are we giving up? To my point, is always like, just accept exactly. it. But I'm like, so you just well, accept be, failure? Because you, you feel accept? like you're a mom. You feel like you're yeah. a mom. You have two kids. And at the end of the day, I think we just, we get to this point in life. And I think women especially yeah. get to this point in life, in midlife, where it just feels like we give up. Yeah. And it just feels like the society gives up on us. Mm-hmm. We give up on us. Like mm-hmm. husbands give up on us. You know, it just kind of yeah. seems like it's over for you. And for me, it genuinely feels like I'm just getting yeah. started. Yeah. So how do you change that mindset? Because what I realized, it's just one decision. Yeah. It's like, it is just choosing happy. It, yeah. And yeah. making that choice. And you just get up and you get dressed every day and you will see how things change. Yeah. And then when you get in that routine too, it just gets easier and easier because, you know, I feel like the first like month or two is hard, but then once you're, once you're just on the, in that routine and you're going, it just becomes like second nature to you. Like, and forget, don't you feel like if you do it, I always say, keep it simple. Right? Very simple. Because if you yeah. complicate it, like right. makeup, if you're yeah. trying to do Mario makeup by Mario, you're yeah. not going to look like a yeah, Kardashian. No. It's not yeah. going to work, so you're right. going to give up. And that's yeah. going to be your excuse to give up. Right. If you keep it super simple, I'm always like, start with one lap around the block. Yeah. If you're not used to working out, yeah. if it so, seems overwhelming to you, you don't have time, do one lap around the block. I bet you in two weeks it'll build. Yeah, exactly. So for me too, I mean, like during when COVID hit, I, you know, I was home and I wasn't, you know, I just felt I wasn't working because we had to close yeah. the office. Secondly, yeah. for like three months, we couldn't even go to the office. And I was going crazy. And, and oh you know, God, I, can't imagine. I, I because, you know, when you're working all the time. And so I felt started to feel that rut. Like, what am I doing? I'm home a little like not depressed, but, you know, just yeah. down and and like the world was ending. And so little by little, I would just go outside in my backyard, like I told you earlier, and I would just sit and like open my arms like this and just sit by the fireplace in the backyard, just get a little bit, five minutes of sun. And it just felt like the whole world just changed, little things. Then I started doing little like runs around my house, you know, because the gym was closed. So I would just go outdoor. And just little by little, I just regained that whole like, you know, strong and feeling and feeling good and happy and all of yes. that so it's a little change little tweaks it little doesn't have to be every day that's zero to is. 60 it's yes. just you know take your time and just do it slowly one step at yeah. a time i would say slow and steady yeah. it's so true and it's yeah. like that little bit of each and every day does build and it's huge the bigger picture that you're trying to look at a hundred percent and i want to kind of tap into a little bit now because i know you know when i look at your instagram you talk so much about and you're so open about it, about yeah. menopause. And it's such a taboo. Nobody talks about it. Um, no one ever says anything about it. Your mom doesn't tell you anything about it. Your, your older friends don't say anything. Your doctors Your don't. sisters don't say anything. And so, you know, sometimes, you know, you're going through these changes and no one tells you what to prepare for. So um, I really love the fact that you're so open about it and you talk yeah. about it. But I really want to 
um, get into depth about all the symptoms that you are feeling mm-hmm. and how you felt at that time and what did you go through? Because I know there's a lot of women that are listening and I think it's important to, you know, really discuss that and just Absolutely. be open and, and not have shame about it. And so tell us a little bit about what you went through. So Kita, for me, you know, it was in my mid forties, I obviously gave birth at 38 and 40 mm-hmm. and then I put an IUD in. Okay. So I used the IUD that did have hormones in it. So apparently after doing some research, I heard, I'm hearing now that it's triggering, like some of these, you know, IUDs or birth control is triggering early onset of perimenopause or things like that, because everyone says it's about 55. When I started talking about it on Instagram, women were like, oh, 42, 43. So it was like, it's not 55. Getting earlier. It's way, way earlier. So I was like, okay, that's really interesting. I started kind of analyzing, thinking, okay, in your 40s, no wonder there's so much divorce. It's like, like if women actually start to go crazy, you go (laughs) Crazy. So for me, what started to happen was you start with the hot flashes, Mm -hmm. right? They start slow and steady every once in a blue moon. You know, I remember being like in a store and being like, oh my God, it's so hot in here. And nobody else was hot, but I was like, God, and like my shirt, I was like, it's so hot. So I was like, oh my God, I think that's a hot flash. Cut to obviously those become more and more regular and more and more intense. To so the, you recognize that these are. It was like that's weird. It, yeah. Nobody else was sweating. The hair, you know. So you kind yeah. of was like, that's you, odd, right? So it was like, oh, that's funny. So yes, yeah, so you start kind of researching, mm-hmm. talking to the doctors, like, oh, you might be in perimenopause, but yeah. you know, no one talks about it. No one tells right. you anything. And you're kind of like, oh, okay, so it's just some hot flashes. Cut to, you know, your husband pisses you off. You know what used to be like, okay, he's so annoying. Like, or you know what, we're not talking for a minute. You know, I'm just annoyed. <laughs> to you are screaming at the top of your lungs. You basically turn into the Hulk. Like you might, I might as well have ripped my shirt off, turned green. I was like, I hate everybody. Like, it's like you, I was like, I'm getting on a plane. I'm never coming back. <laughs> How many times did you pack your bag, Caroline, you no and idea. walk out the door? It's like the fact that we're still married. Like you can, you understand why people are divorced because you are a monster, oh like a monster. Gosh. Then you're drenched in sweat. You've gained 25 pounds. Like you have a tire around your waist. Now you have like now you smell, you have wet armpits. I mean, things that your hair is falling out, it's dry and brittle. You are like, what? It, you turn into like a monster. I mean, you're kind of like, your body's becoming deficient in all of these hormones mm-hmm. and your body's freaking out and nobody tells you and nobody warns you. So all of a sudden now, you know, you hate everyone because you hate <laughs> your entire family, you hate everybody. And then all of a sudden it'll pass and literally uh-huh. you're like, oh, sorry. Hi. Hi. I'm back. Like, sorry. Oopsie. And my husband's like, you are crazy. And it's like, thank God we could talk about it. What just happened? That was not me. I was like, oh, I'm back. Everything's fine. I mean, I just literally told him I was leaving, never coming back. So it is one of those things where if you can be open, I think that's where it's really crucial because I can literally now, like at the time, I would Mm -hmm. start to feel the rage coming on. I would start to feel the, the body start to heat up. Mm-hmm. Like you can start to see right. the signs that I would be like, John, I'm not in a mood. I'm in a mood. Leave me alone. I don't feel good. Things like that. The anxiety, the heart palpitation. So the anxiety, I never was really a super anxious person. And all of a sudden it was like really scary anxiety. Like, yeah. like you know, your heart feels like, it feels like you're having a heart attack. Mm-hmm. Like you kind of want to call an ambulance. It's pretty scary. I, yeah. So it's starting to have that kind of anxiety then your joints start to hurt, like everything. Now, oh, two bulging discs. Now I've got my art, like everything hurts. You are the most athletic person on the planet. Now everything hurts. Wow. So the deterioration in your 40s to 50 in your body is mind blowing. And the deficiency in hormones and how wow. your body starts to react, That's you kind insane. of start to understand. So for me, I started to kind of, un- I was going, it was COVID. So no doctors mm-hmm. were open. Mm-hmm. There was no doctor to go see. There was no HRT. Right. There was no medicine. There was nothing. I was literally like... You had to deal with it on I your own. I was the Hulk during COVID. That's all you need your to know. Your poor husband. I mean, John I mean, is a we, saint. Okay. We, we need to send him flowers, I, I feel mean, like. Poor John. And so literally during that time, I would just research vitamins. Mm-hmm. I was taking L-theanine. L-theanine, mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. it's called. L-theanine. I was taking uh, vitamin D. Yeah. Vitamin B. The vitamin D is so important. So, so important. important. So I kind of started like just popping a lot of vitamin C, vitamin D, L-theanine, um, things that were good for the nervous system, just things like that, that I just didn't have my hands on anything else. Right. More like herbal things. All herbal, just vitamins. Yeah. And, you know, just giving myself a little bit of grace, getting that workout in, doing that anti-inflammatory kind of diet, because I yeah. think it does matter you know intermittent fasting those Mm -hmm. you know prolon i did twice those fasting things that really just clean your body out 
Um, and then once I was able to go to the doctor and kind of talk to her, we did all the blood work, which I always say to women, check your blood your levels. Blood. Check yeah. it. So when I went to the doctor, I was post menopause. <gasps> wow. So I gotten through the worst of it now. And she was like, oh my God, you got through it. Wow. Without. And I was like, that was hell. And she was like, yeah, but you don't need HRT now. She's like, I would just replace the IUD, get those fresh hormones in you. I think that's right. what helped you get through it. Mm -hmm. And she's like, and it helps prevent cervical cancers. It helps prevent with uterine cancers, the IUD with the hormones. So she's like, she put a new one in and that's what I have for the next seven years. But now wow. at this point, you know, the weight gain has started to drop off. Mm -hmm. The bloat has started to drop off. I do feel two years out. It's funny. I do start, I think that's why they say the women become cougars because you start to feel good again. <laughs> oh, that's you know good. I mean? You start to kind of get yourself back, back and you start to kind of, you've been through war and you kind of feel like bring badass. It on, bring oh, it on. I can I take like, anything oh, yeah. now. <laughs> now it's like you do, you feel badass. Yeah. And I, yeah. you do feel like you've gotten through the hardest part and I'm on the other side. So you do get through it you will get through it. And the greatest advice is, is really get as much as information as you can to right. don't ignore it. I, I can't believe that you went through that during COVID. You have no idea. You the, go to this, see me. <laughs> and I, I feel bad for John. I mean, <laughs> I wish there was a video of me was, coming out of my room. What was John's reaction? Like how, how did he take all that? I, I wanted guys up side you know his opinion there were what? hard days i mean i would yeah. be lying if i said it wasn't you know there was definitely was he just like okay i'm just gonna let her be and step away and and leave her alone or was he like come give me a hug and no at first he was very much i think he was terrified to be yeah. honest like at first i think he was yeah. very much like didn't know what to think and mm -hmm. how to take it all in and mm -hmm. i think it was very much like he would shut down a bit and i think he would become very quiet and i think that would annoy me because i'd be like why are you so quiet like i need you know it's like you want to fight it's weird it's like you want yeah you know, well you, you have you want to react Anger. Yes. It's, a, it's aggression it's like, almost it's inside crazy. you. Yeah. And then I think once he kind of really started to understand what I was going through and I would kind of talk to him and be like, I just don't feel like myself. Like, I really don't feel like myself. Like, I don't know why I'm so angry. Or I would be, it's hysterical crying where it would scare somebody. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where I was mm -hmm. like, I don't hate everybody, but like, I just feel like that right now. And yeah. it was like being able to kind of express like, I I don't know and why. And did you I'm cry this. in front of your husband? Oh, all the time, all the time. So he saw, he saw, he what saw he the desperation where he would be like, yeah. "I don't even know what to do." Like he, there really was nothing to do except for just be like, "We're gonna be okay. You're gonna get through We're it. We're gonna get through it." So, so now, how you know, now that you're on the other side, are, are you feeling completely different? Is that a hundred percent back, or how, how do you feel? Like, is there any like? leftover stuff that you still yeah. kind of go through or is it kind of done and I would say the only thing that really gets left more there's really not that anger anymore mm -hmm. it's just like you will feel it's funny every few months yeah there will be a little bit of a hormone rate like a little bit of a surge <laughs> that one day that one day that yeah. one something where you feel a little edgy you feel a little off you feel like you're cranky you can tell but like yeah. you don't really know why so like I'm very aware that I'm like I don't feel like myself today or something or I will get like a little mini hot flash here and there. Every wow. once in a while, like I'll just be like drenched in sweat. Like, oh my God, it's so hot. But it's rare now. Yeah. So it kind of starts to peter. Much. No, it starts to really peter out. And you're very, you're very aware of it now. Wow. That's... So you can handle it. You can deal with it. So there is uh, light at the end of the there tunnel. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Wow. I it's promise just, it, you. It's crazy because not so many women talk about that. And As I think people think it's like it says something about your age. And at the end of the day, we're all, there is no escaping it. Yeah. No one's escaping menopause. I don't care how rich you are, how famous you are, how beautiful you are, how perfect you think your life you're is. You're going to go through You're going to go through menopause and yeah. you are going to become a monster and your husband's going to think you're insane. <laughs> and you have to get through it. And we just have to get through it. And I think the more knowledge yeah. is power. And the yeah. more we all share and talk about it, like we can laugh about it rather than half of these women going through yeah. divorce. And even the boys, I will have to, I have said, honestly, and this yeah. is for all of you ladies out there, like, don't be afraid to talk to your kids. I yes. have absolutely said to my kids, mom's not feeling good. Yeah. or mom's having a really hard day because mm -hmm. my hormone like I'll say you know I know you don't understand but it's like this is mom's this age is a yeah. really hard time well, and, that's good. and I do try to explain because yeah. I I was over the top a couple of times right. and I did freak out a couple of times or <laughs> just they raging. Did, <laughs> raging or they hear me angry or they see me not happy it does yeah. scare them a little bit yeah because I think they are used to me being happy so when they yeah. see you not happy they're a little they're like, like are you okay <laughs> So I think it's just <laughs> is good this to be, our mom? Is our mom right. back? I think is it's she good back? To, no, because I think yeah. it, it does scare kids. I think it's very important. Yeah, to, yeah, to, because you don't want them to think you're upset for other reasons. Yes. you know, because of them or daddy or yes, marriage or whatever it is. You have to. I think it's important to explain to them. You know, to we're going through some changes yes. or whatnot. Yeah, totally. Um, so I want to. Uh, 
talk a little bit about Instagram and how okay. did you, you know, you started getting up every morning yep. and talking into the camera. Tell us a little bit how you build your Instagram and how did that, and you have so many followers now and so many people asking you for advice oh. and and all of that and I think it's amazing I'm so, so honored honestly it, it does not I there's not one day I'm not insanely grateful yeah for this platform and the fact that anybody is willing to listen and support is does never goes unnoticed I'm yeah. very very grateful because the truth is this has brought me back to life yes. like all of you know all of these incredible women have honestly brought me back to life and the truth was along you know about four and a half years almost five years ago now um, you know, everybody would just always talk to you about your clothes and just like, oh, what do you wear? It's just your friends, you know, it's just your yeah. friends on Instagram. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try it. Like it was that feeling of, I was trying to find myself again. I was going to get, you know, I was getting up and getting dressed again. And I was like, you know, I'm going to just show my outfit and like, why not? Everyone's asked me for, why, why not me too? Why can't I just tag people? Yeah. And I thought, I'm just going to try. I want something of my own. I didn't know what, I didn't know what, and I just knew I was home and I needed something that was easy and something mm -hmm. that I normally do anyway. So I was like, I know right. I love getting dressed. I know I'm gonna get dressed every day. So I'll just show my outfit every day. That's it. Yeah. That's where it started. And then COVID hit. So when COVID hit, it was that everyone's sitting at home and shit, are people gonna get dressed? Like, what are we doing? So I just remember waking up one morning and I was like sitting in bed. It was like 5.30 in the morning. And I don't know what occurred to me to get on stories and literally just start talking about my life. I was just started talking about everything I was going through with my parents, everything I was going through with getting dressed. And then I kind of was showing every morning what my thought what process you, was. And then yeah. I was showing how, you know, I'm going to keep getting dressed. I was like, I know we're in COVID. I know we're going through this really hard time, but life can be really hard and life's hard a lot of the time. And it doesn't mean you give up and it doesn't mean you don't get dressed. It's like, you still get up and you still get dressed and you still make an effort no matter what. And I was like, I'm going to get up and I'm going to get dressed every goddamn day, no matter what. I was like, I'm going to walk out of this pandemic looking amazing. I was like, I'm going to have my shit together. And I was like, well, I you guys all it. give up. I'm going to get dressed. <laughs> and that's You're literally. You're like, well, all you guys look like shit. I'm going to look like, like I'm going to a wedding. Literally. I'm going to look myself. I'm going to look good. I did. I was like, you guys, you go ahead and look like shit. You're going to be pissed when the COVID's over. And I was like, I'm going to walk out looking fabulous. And the truth was, that's where it, I was like, I'm going to get up and I'm going to get dressed every day. And that's really you. where it just started to build. And good I think just you. that community and I think women just not feeling alone I think there were just so many women sitting at home being like god I'm bored too yeah. or it's not that my life isn't good but it doesn't we were but I'm not bored. happy yeah. we're just bored. you know what I mean it was yeah. kind of like well I think reality hit for a lot of people during yeah. COVID too because you know even if you're married at that time and you weren't happy you didn't realize it because you were working he you're was so working busy. you come home you're so busy the kids dinner whatever go to bed get up and do it again but when you're home with that person and I and I heard there was a lot of divorces during oh, COVID sure. too and a lot I'm of people sure. Yeah, whatever. A lot of hard time with families. A lot of hard yeah. times just because you realize, you know, I have to be with this person now 24-7. And then you realize like, oh, well, crap, guess, I'm not happy. And that's when I start, that's when I was saying, you got to look in the, people start to exactly. look in the mirror. And yeah. I think people for the first time were actually taking the time to look in the mirror because we're all rushing at all the yeah. moms in the morning with their hair wrecked, the coffee, mm -hmm. the husband's drinking his coffee perfectly fine, quaffed. He's of going course. to school, but like we're a wreck. Yeah. And you're just go, go, go. And you never take the time to just look in the mirror and be like, what does that reflection say about you? Because yeah. it says everything about how you look says everything about oh, how you everything. feel. It's, it's every day. Pe people's perception of you is, is it's really just by yep. the first perception is how you look. Yep. You haven't even, you don't have to say anything. It's just, you look good. You're dressed up. You take care of yourself. People are going to also value you even more, you know? So, and I think that's, you know, and I think that's what COVID did. It made yeah. us all have to look in the mirror and, and face and really face it. And it's mm -hmm. like, what are you going to do with that? You're either going to get up or you're going to give up. And so now you have such a big following on Instagram. So how's that going? Is that like a, obviously it's a daily, is it an eight hour job for you? It is. Are it you is, in front of the camera all day? Seven. It is 24 seven for five years. I mean, people think again, it is an overnight. It's been five years mm -hmm. of every single day putting mm -hmm. out four to five to eight pieces of content across all platforms you know, just constantly trying to give That's as much lot. advice, give as much love, try to spread as much positivity and kindness, um, trying to keep it as real as possible. I, you know, I, oh, I've never used filters. I've always been just try to be as transparent and keep it as real as possible. And I, I think that. for the first time in a long time, I think people are craving real. Yeah. And I think I, I think, I think I'm good. very lucky that I think for whatever reason, I think people are understanding the message. And I think women are just tired of all the hate 
tired of feeling like shit and looking like shit and not doing shit. Yeah. So I think it's like this moment where I think midlife is like women are coming oh. in and being like, you know what? We we can look fabulous and we can feel and fabulous and we can do fabulous things. Why not? Why not? And yeah. I hope to be that gentle reminder every single day. If and I can cheer you on, I'm happy to. Thank you. So what is um, next for Caroline? So we have been we've been so lucky all the hard work is finally uh -huh. you know it's really paying off we've signed on with an incredible team and we're represented for a book and podcast and tv Aww. so we're developing a tv show we're right doing That's a book amazing so we're you know we're about to like strike while the iron is hot we're gonna be doing merch you know we're just I kind of like that. we're about to kick it into gear i love so that and what excited. is the tv show gonna be about so we're hoping more of a talk show yeah more of like yeah. a talk show like I mean I miss Oprah I miss you know yeah. women having real conversations I miss women yeah. you know supporting each other and getting real information I just think everything's become so ridiculous mm -hmm. and like the drunk idiot you know fighting oh, yeah the I'm drama like, the drama and yeah. I'm like I would love to have something that's you know more real more real smart women coming together showing that what you can really accomplish yeah so, I mean if you turn on the tv a lot of it now is just it's you all know. the housewives and all that. And it's listen. It's all good and fine. Yeah. It's just for me. I know I'm at an age where you're I just, in a different. You're in a different place. I'm just in a different place. You're I in just, a different I have place. no interest in being drunk at a restaurant. And you like, want to impact lives as well. I you do. don't want to just you know show up. I want to be a, speaking on stages with mics, lifting yeah. up as many women across the planet as possible. That is so important. Like well, honestly, I will be there to support you. I love you. I, I thank honestly you. think you're so amazing thank you. and you're incredible. And such a good energy. Like, I just saw you just like, ah, Oh, we were screaming, you. running to see each other. <laughs> I actually walked, walked, by, walked by your assistant, and Murphy was like, Car Caroline is here. I was like, oh, shit. And I didn't realize your assistant was there. She's like, hi, I'm her assistant. I was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I just cussed. <laughs> it's the best. Are you kidding me? Um, I'm like, okay, I'm here. <laughs> you're the best. You're, no, you're gorgeous awesome. and stunning. And oh my thank gosh, you so thank you much. So and much. you're the epitome of what I talk about. Because, again, just to see you put together... You're smart, you're capable, you're oh. kind, you're a doctor. And you're so you did sweet. it all. So. I love you and I can't I want to hang out with you again. Absolutely. Like we got to get have you on one Absolutely. more time. You're amazing. Thank you for driving down. I love down. you. And yeah, I can't wait for everybody to tune in. This is such an amazing episode. I love you, you're babe. Great. Thank you. I love you more. Mwah. Mwah. Like a <laughs> 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 <la